Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Macario, and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we help you to get from point A to grade A. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for coming back and listening again. And if it's your first time, welcome aboard. Today we're going to be talking about addition polymers. So we'll talk about what is a polymer, we'll talk about what is a monomer as well, and then we'll talk about what specifically is an addition polymer and how does that get made from an alkene. So to start with, what are polymers? Well, polymers are very large compounds made up of repeating smaller units. And that's the case because they're made from much smaller compounds, much smaller molecules that come together and combine to make a much, much bigger chain, usually a chain of carbon atoms. And there are many examples in nature. For example, the proteins that occur in our cells and the cells of every other living creature. Starch is also an example of a natural polymer, the DNA and RNA in the nuclei of cells, and so many more examples too. These are all made in nature from reactions that combine smaller compounds, smaller molecules. And those smaller molecules are called the monomers. When we combine monomers, we can make a big chain called the polymer. In modern times, Mankind's been able to copy nature and we've been able to make synthetic polymers. And these synthetic polymers will include the plastics that you are used to seeing every day that are so useful to us. Things like a polythene, polypropylene, nylon, terylene and so many more. And amongst those there are different categories of polymers and we're interested today in the addition polymers. The addition polymers are those that have been created by the reaction of many molecules of alkenes. And amongst those examples, polythene or polyethene and polypropene are the addition polymers. Let's think about polyethene. That is created when a reaction occurs between many molecules of ethene. During the reaction, the second bond, the double bond between the two carbon atoms, breaks and reforms elsewhere. And you probably hear that described as the bond opening up. It's described as that quite frequently. The double bond opens up and reforms, not between the same two carbons, but between one of the carbons on this monomer and one of the carbons of the double bond of the next molecule of ethene. And so on and so on. The double bond on that particular molecule also has to open up because the carbon in that molecule can only have four bonds at any moment. So that bond also opens up and the electrons form a new bond between the other carbon in that molecule and a carbon in the third molecule. And and thus a chain is beginning to form. The same opening up and reforming of bonds is happening many successive times to form a long chain of singly bonded carbons that are the backbone of the polymer. There are no longer double bonds within that chain. So what are the conditions for making polythene? Well, it depends which type of polyethene is being made. Is it the type, is it the flexible low density type that you might find in a plastic bag? Or is it the high density type that you'll find in a more rigid, denser plastic structure? So the high density type is made at pressures of six or seven atmospheres and perhaps 60 or 70 degrees Celsius in the presence of a catalyst. And that catalyst is the Ziegler Natta catalyst. Remember that. If you're studying A level, you'll be expected to remember that. Low density, the flexible kind of polyethene, is made in very different conditions. That catalyst isn't used, but much higher pressures and higher temperatures are used. So the pressure of at least a thousand atmospheres and a temperature of about 250 Celsius would be used for making the low-density polyethene. Okay, so how about if we use a different monomer, if we're making a different polymer? So example, if we're making polypropylene, the monomer, the individual alkene molecules that are used to make that, propene. So where do the new bonds form? Well, obviously, if we consider the first molecule of propene, during the reaction, the double bond opens and the new bond forms between one of the carbons that was in the double bond and a carbon in the next molecule 
of propene, but it's it's not just any carbon. It's got to be one that was in the double bond. Remember, there is a third carbon in propene that only has single bonds, and that one isn't going to get involved in the polymerization. That carbon and the hydrogens attached to it are going to be a side chain in the product. That's the same for all addition polymers, whatever alkenes we use. The formation of the chain of carbons is exclusively the carbons that were in the double bonds within the alkene. Okay, what have we talked about today? Well, we said that polymers occur both naturally and synthetically. We mentioned there are synthetic examples that are addition polymers and there are others. The addition polymers are the addition of monomers of alkene molecules. And we talked about the conditions to make high density and low density polythene. High density uses the Ziegler Natta catalyst, a moderate pressure and a moderate temperature. The low density, the flexible stuff in a plastic bag, is formed without catalyst, but a much higher temperature and very much higher pressure. And then we talked about whatever alkene we're using, whatever addition polymer is being created, the carbon chain is created by the opening of the double bond between the two double bonded carbons, and that makes a connection, makes a new bond, with one of those double bonded carbons in the next molecule of the monomer, and so on, regardless of however many other carbons might be available in the monomer, it's just the double bonded ones that get involved in making the carbon chain. I hope that's been useful. I'd love to hear your takeaways from this episode. Please do let me know. One way you can let me know is contact me on Instagram at Chemistry Made Simple and let me know what you got from the episode. That would be great. Or post and then tag me in that too. If you have more questions about what what we've talked about in this episode, consider becoming a supporter, a patron of the podcast. I'm answering questions in there that are coming up from the patrons that are supporting the podcast each week. Also, if you are a patron, you can come along to the regular accountability calls to help you be more intentional about your study and carry that through. So to find out more about this, just go to patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, and I'll put a link in the episode description, the show notes too. That's the end of this episode. I hope it's been useful. All that remains to say is I look forward to seeing you on the accountability calls. Until the next episode, look after yourself and goodbye.